This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk us through this 2024 Flagstaff Shamrock. And the uh, model number is 235S. Okay? So this is a how-to video. I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. Now because I'm doing this alone, I'm not going to drop the, the beds. Um, but we'll show you how when you pick up, we'll show you how that works. And also, don't hesitate to go to uh, Flagstaff's website and look at their, their product videos, their demonstration videos, because they have really, really good ones too. So, um, uh, we'll start right here with the power awning with an LED strip. Okay. Two outside speakers. That is a vent for the range hood. So if you want to vent to the outside, you got to push. The, you can barely see them, but there's two little tabs up there. You push them with your thumb or index finger, and it'll pop the vent loose so it flaps freely, and uh, the the air will vent to the outside. If you're not vent, if you're not using the fan, you can just keep it snap shut. You know when you're traveling or in storage, whatever. Okay. Um, we have a TV hook up here or TV bracket here. You get the other half of the bracket with the trailer. And here's signal out and power so you could hang a TV out there. We also have um, a rail here to hang your griddle on. Now under here, let's see if we can find it. Right here. Under here you can see the orange cap of the quick connect for the LP system, so I think your your grill right now is sitting in the inside. I'll just point it out to you. This griddle will hang right on the rail, and then you use this this uh, LP line, this flexible quick connect LP line, to plug it into the system, and then it, the griddle itself hangs on these hooks here, right on the side of the building those, or on the uh, sorry, excuse me, the side of the, the trailer. Um, that those uh, the rail I showed you fits right in there. Okay, so as we move on, of course, this is the vent for your furnace. Uh, this is a water uh, hookup, a sprayer. You get a coiled sprayer with it, so you can hook it up right there and hose hose things down. Do whatever you need to do with it. Now this is the, the fill for the fresh water tank. Now nine times out of ten you're just going to be using city water. That's the most common way to get water to a trailer. You just hook up the city water and everything works. But if you're camping someplace, maybe boondocking or camping someplace where there's no city water, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank and uh, then use the onboard pump to pump the water. All the plumbing will work as though you have city water. You'll just be pumping it out of the tank. So if you have city water you don't have to worry about this tank. But if, you, if you're going to a place without city water, like I said, you pre-fill the tank and you'll have all the water you need. Um, this is your outside kitchen. So you have a refrigerator, of course. This is another quick connect that connects underneath the trailer, just like the other one does. And um, that is to, to bring... A, LP to your cooktop here. You got a two burner cooktop. Okay. And then this of course folds right in when you're when you're traveling. Okay. Uh, when I look in here, you can see you have cranks. You have a three quarter inch crank. I know it's kind of dark in there. It's really dark in there. But you have a three quarter inch crank for your stabilizer. And then you have this small one here. Right? This small crank is in case the tongue jack was to fail. So if your power tongue jack, you know, stopped working, uh, you could always pull this rubber plug on the top, you put that crank right on there, and you can crank it manually to get yourself hitched and unhitched no matter what. So that's a good option, good feature, of course. All right, um, you have a deep cycle marine battery. You've got a kill switch for the battery. The kill switch is right here. Let's see it right over there, hopefully you can see that. It's kind of tough to see, but it's there, right, 
right in back of the of the LP tanks. So um, you have a. Uh, uh, Two LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator, and of course, like I said, your power tongue jack. You have a docking light here. And this is your hitch here. You ordered this with a um, Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built in sway control. So that's what this is here. We'll show you how this works when you pick up. And just so you know, with this thing here, that is your power inverter. There's two things. This trailer converts and then inverse power. So conversion is, is taking um, uh, AC power and turning it into DC, right? Inversion is the other way around. You go from DC to AC. I'll explain more of that about that too when we get inside. So um, but that, the switch to control your inverter is inside, but that's the actual inverter. All right. Okie dokie. Um, your dump valves here, of course. Black tank, which is toilet water and waste, and gray tank, which is sink and shower water. Now your hookups are back here. All right, so you have your city water hookup right here. That's the most common way to get water to the trailer. This is for winterizing the trailer. You'll have to educate yourself about that if you're going to winterize it yourself. And this is the black tank flush. So after you dump your black tank here, you leave the black tank valve open and then you hook the hose on here at the dump station you turn it on you can spray out your black tank clean it out really well clean off your sensor so you get a good accurate reading that sort of thing but like it says on the sticker here always make sure that you have the black tank valve open before you turn the water on so you don't build up too much pressure and you have campground cable and satellite through this is where your power cord would go. Your power cord is in the front pass-through compartment, but it's just our shop cord. But it's a 30 amp, 30 foot cord. Uh, you get a dump hose with it too, and that adapter to adapt it down to a 20. Okay. We're going to go. Like I said, we can go over the the um, the bed doors when you when you pick up, but. The main thing about the bed doors is you have to make sure your the canvas is tucked in and it's on the inside of the seal. There's a, a rubber seal that runs around around the edge of this. All the all the um, uh, canvas has to be on the inside so water can't trickle through. Okay, right. And you order this with a backup camera. And that's it right there. Now, when we're looking up, the manufacturer states you should inspect your trailer every 60, or inspect your roof every 60 to 90 days. So make sure that you go up there or have somebody go up there and look at the, the roofing attachments and the roofing material. Make sure there's no damage by low branches or road debris, that sort of thing. Make sure that uh, uh, there's no cracking or sealing at any of the uh, sealant, like, or cracking or separation at any of the sealant. Uh, if you see any issues, take care of it immediately, obviously. You can't see what's happening up there unless somebody goes up there and look, and you need to know what's happening up there so you can protect your investment. So, so as we go in here, this is your solar controller. Okay. So we're inside the building now, so we're not converting any solar energy into uh, electricity, but. This tells us 72 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the most common screen. 13.6 volts DC, right? Let it come around again. And right now we're, we're getting 0.0, .0 amps, right? That's only because we're inside. If we're outside, we would be, it depends on the, uh, the conditions outside, the time of day and the temperature, or the time of the day and the, and the weather conditions, that sort of thing. But, um, the screen with the two the two uh, sets of numbers, this one right here is the most common. It tells you the voltage, DC voltage in your system, and the, what you're gaining from the sun. Okay? We can talk more about that if you need to. So that's, that's for your solar. Um, that's the solar controller for your, for your solar panel. Now, we talked outside about inversion. This also has inverted uh, circuits here, inverted receptacles. So this one says it's inverted, right? You can see it printed right on there. Um, what that means is that 
Um, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have um, you don't have any plug-ins, so you don't have any 110 AC to plug into, you can using the 12 volt DC in the battery. You can turn this on, and you can you can hear a beep there as it turns on. You can basically invert enough energy from the batteries so when you if you have small appliances with you like a blender or a, a coffee pot or whatever you have that run on AC power it'll you can, you can invert enough DC power out of the batteries and, and invert it to 8 to 110 AC to run small appliances so that's what it, it, that's the inversion is all about um, it will not run the air conditioner or the microwave because you would have to have a whole a whole bank of batteries to do that but um it's just a way to way to keep your to get a, a little bit of AC power when you need it. Okay, um, so that's what this is here. You can just shut it off when you're not using it. You hold it in for a few seconds. And it goes off. Okay, so that's the inverter controller. Just while we're here, this is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If it's not green, get it serviced. It'll detect carbon monoxide buildup, LP gas buildup, and if it beeps very very slowly. Very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. It's a low battery alert, too. Okay. All right. So that's inversion. Now, we also have conversion over here. This is, most trailers have this device here. This is the power converter. So when you're plugged into shore power, you have 110 AC at these circuit breakers here. These are just like you'd see at home. And they're all labeled, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC. So you're going from AC to DC now. And, um, you you have 12 volt DC fuses here and they're all labeled um, this is also a battery tender so or a battery charger you could call it it basically it keeps an eye on your battery as long as you're plugged into AC power um, you know regular shore power it'll always keep your battery charged so it, it, it senses how much energy your battery needs up on the tongue that battery and, and always keep it charged now basically when you're when you're plugged in to shore power, this will keep your batteries charged. When you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator keeps the battery charged. And of course, the solar panel keeps, uh, keeps your battery charged as it can. It's always converting um, sunlight into amps and, and storing it in the battery. Okay? So, that's basically it for the, the power. You can learn as much as you want about it. There are in the packet or in this book in this one on this one you can you can learn everything you need to keep in mind that you could also go to manufacturers websites like go power make some of this stuff WFC, WFCO make some of it um, you, they've got great product videos there too so you can learn as much as you want to okay so let me come back over here where we started at so that's your solar controller, solar solar controller sl charger. Um, this just tells you about the app. Everything has an app these days. Um, your awning, your power awning, extend and retract. Your slide room, extend and retract. Never leave the awning out unattended. If you're not going to be at the tra at the trailer, roll it in. You can light your water heater on gas here. You can light it on electric here. Never run the water heater without water in the tank. Right now, though, it, it's it's empty and bypassed because it's winterized. Always fill it before you, you turn it on. Your water pump we talked about is right there. That's for pumping um, uh, water out of the fresh water tank. If you don't have city water, it's also used to winterize the trailer. And it has also tank heating pads here. So this extends, extends your camping season uh, by heating the tank so they don't freeze. And this is to connect to your app, of course. And then you have all your levels here. So it's pretty standard when it comes to that. Um, your thermostat is very simple. It's analog. Basically keep the fan on auto. One click to the right is heat. One click to the left of off is fan, which is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. And then two clicks over is cool, which is full air conditioning. Very simple. Okay, so let's look around a little bit here. This, this microwave works like any other microwave. This is the, the range hood vent that, or range hood fan that I told you about. Remember to open the vent on the outside if you're if you're venting to the outside. Uh, these are just sink covers here. I don't know if he's got the gas turned on here so by the way that your keys are hanging right on the sink here and everything's key to like in this so you don't have to have a whole fistful of keys. 
So that's a good good feature always. So you have um, a sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark. You have three knobs here for the three burners, and the last one is for the oven. Like I said, I don't know if he's got. No, it looks like it's not turned on. But if it if it was, as soon as you um, spark it, it'll light. Uh, the oven is a little different in that it has a, a pilot light all the way at the bottom in the back there. Let me see if we can spark it to see. Yeah, you can see it back there. So you're just going to go to the oven knob, you go to the picture of the flame, you depress it and keep it depressed. Then you spark it so you see the flame light down here. Once it lights, you're still holding this in, keeping it depressed. And uh, once, the, once it lights, you, you hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up your thermocouple and then you go to operating temperature, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, when you shut it off, the flame will go out, but so does the pilot light, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. You also have an ambient light there and then an oven light there. Okay. Always travel with this shut. Your refrigerator is a 12 volt DC refrigerator. So it runs on 12 volt DC. Okay. Just more storage that you would expect. When we come over here to the TV, the TV is on a, well, let's see here. It's got storage behind it. Uh, quite a bit of storage, actually. And um, you have a remote for that right here, it looks like. Then uh, this is the remote for your, your sound bar here. The sound bar has FM radio, no AM. I don't know why they, some of them don't have AM these days, but has a FM radio and uh, it has Bluetooth in it it has a USB drive right there so you could you know take all your mp3s with you on one stick take all your music whatever it has two speaker zones A and B is A is inside the trailer B is outside the trailer so it pretty much does everything you need to when it comes to entertainment at a campsite uh, this other remote this one here is for the fireplace now the fireplace is a space heater too so it's really kicks out the heat and it runs on AC power so <laughs> on those days where it's not cold enough to use your limited supply of LP gas you can just use campground power and take the chill out of it there you have it right there um, it's really kicking out the heat now so Shutting, shutting down though, but it really kicks out the heat. Um, this is a hide a bed here. They so pull the cushions off the back and set them aside. Grab it down here, fold it out, drop the legs, and you've got a a, a really really nice hide a bed. It's actually comfortable. You want to travel with this table in the in the down or stowed position. Therefore, I won't take it down. I'll just show you though. There's this little this lever here with this yellow piece of plastic on it you'll click this to the right which which unlatches it then you'll ca you'll collapse the table at these hinges here right there's two hinges one here and one here and it'll rest right on these these plastic cleats it also has some velcro on it back there so it doesn't move once it's down if you don't if you don't still if you don't st uh, travel with it in the stone position it can bounce around and potentially break a window or damage a cupboard or something um, so it's better to always run it, run the trailer with this in down position. Also, this turn when you stow it, it turns into a bed, so you got more, uh, more sleeping area. Okay. In this drawer, we got all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to go through. There's your coiled sprayer, inline water, um, filter. This is the TV bracket. The other half of the one for the outside. This is this is new here. This is. This is uh, you have to program it when, the way you want to program it. But in your in your basically in your wheels, there's inside the on the wheel inside inside the tire, mounted directly across from the valve stem, is a sensor on all, on all four of your wheels, and you can program this to to uh, alert you when the temperature on the hub gets too hot, or when your your uh, tire pressure starts dropping. It's a, it's a really good tire monitor, so you always have that too. Okay, so let's see what else do we have here. 
something I wanted to show you. This is important here. If you if your family uses a lot of Wi-Fi, I know this says this says 5G on it and all that, but just just picture public Wi-Fi. Um, if your family uses a lot of Wi-Fi, you can purchase this. If you scan this, you'll, it'll take you to the web page. But there's also a, a cover on the roof for, and uh, if you buy the kit for it, you would mount the antenna on the roof, and then a, there's a, a, a router box that goes right here. So basically, you're, it's a signal booster for public Wi-Fi, and it'll really increase the 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 uh, the, cap the quality of the Wi-Fi, the, the power of the signal, and all that. So. Um, if your family uses a lot of public Wi-Fi, you might want to look into that. Also, you have fan here. It's a four-speed fan, which is great. This does have canvas tents on it, so if you if you do start to get condensation, you just turn these the fan on low. You won't even hear it running, it move, but it'll pull any condensation out. You'll never have an issue with it. Okay. Um, so it's pre-wired for this this the, this product here. That's all I'm saying. Um, let's go this way. So the, there is one unique kind of a device here when it comes to ecology. This is the shower miser. What this is is a recirculating uh, system that basically loops the. And normally when you're heating up your hot water, the cold water while you're heating it up will just go right down the drain, right? So nowadays with a lot of, a lot of places having water issues, and um, not only that, you have limited storage in your gray tank, you can basically go, so you can see this how it's showing you, it's circular, it's, it's recycling. You put it in that position and turn on your hot water. So what happens is it just loops it around from, the, from here to the water heater, to the water pump, to here, it just goes around in a loop and a loop. And as it heats up, and once it heats up, this will turn a beige's color. You'll see it plain as day. Once that happens, you know that it's uh, it's the water's already heated up. So you go to the top position here, and you've got hot water, and you didn't waste any any good water or any storage space in your gray tank while you're heating up the water. So that's a shower miser. Like I say, you can always go to websites too, and also the literature is in that book. And then there's a neutral position here for off too. There's a drawings behind it. Okay, there's the same model fan that I just showed you out there. And uh, there are vent covers on it, right? So you can open it up in the, during the rain or whatever. There, it's covered. So when it comes to the toilet, it's a typical RV toilet like they all are. It sits right over a black tank. And there's a flush pedal right there. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water, you come in here, you put a dose of chemical in the bowl, then you stand on the pedal, push it down, and let at least a gallon of water flow into the black tank along with the chemical. Then it's ready to be used. You can use more than a gallon of water, but just don't use less. Uh, if you don't do that, it'll be used, considered using it dry, and it'll get clogged up for sure, and uh, it'll smell terrible, so it'll be a real mess. So. Uh, is if you do, if you don't, if you don't use the chemical chemical in water before you start, you'll probably only do it one time, and learn your lesson on that one. So keep that in mind. GFCI. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI. Keep that in mind. Even the one on the outside. So if it pops outside, it's going to be reset it uh, inside. This one might have two. It's but maybe only one. It's a smaller trailer. But nevertheless, all the plugs are wired through a GFCI. Alrighty, let me shut this off so I always travel, always travel with this latched. We had a customer a few weeks ago that in a different model trailer who did, forgot to latch it and it and it, and it broke because they, they slammed together. You can imagine how hard they slammed together when you're going down the road, turning and bouncing down the road. So okay. Keep it latched and you won't have any problems. Okay, so I think that's it. So I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting the roof. That's very important. Um, just to stay ahead of any problems you might have. Out there you can go up there for years and not have to do anything, but you just never know, so you got to take a look. And right now this is winterized. Um, the water heater, I think I walked right past it, I didn't really get into it, but the water heater, the main thing is don't run it without water in it, of course. Um, let's see here. 
So, um, there's an electric heating element behind this cover here. There's a switch inside to control that. Then there's also a, a burner, gas burner switch. Uh, to drain it, you, it's an inch and a 16, six point socket to pull out the drain. It has an anode rod attached to it. Right now this is empty and is bypassed, so it, it's still winterized. So keep in mind that once you get ready to camp, you always want to fill the water tank before you, before you uh, uh, use it. The way you do that is you'll hook up your, your city water, then you'll turn on a hot water faucet, let's say in the kitchen. And of course water or air will spit out, then it'll be, as it fills up, a mixture of water and air, and then you get a solid stream of water coming out of the hot water. That's when you know that the tank's filled, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, thank you very much, and we'll answer any questions you have when you come to pick it up, okay? Thank you.